Well, the reason I don't like the Walmart on Zero Street, as the guy who used to sell mattresses used to always talk about the Walmart uh, 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 on Zero Street and that he was in that little plaza there. I went in there one time against all better judgment on a Friday afternoon about 4 o'clock and I only had a few items that I had to pick up. So I'm getting ready to check out and there's a lot of people. A lot of blue collar workers here. Everybody gets paid on Friday. And on Friday afternoon they go out to get their munchies and their beer and all their stuff in the extra wide salty snacks aisle. One half of the cashiers took their drawers out and left. Now you know how in a store when the cashier closes out their register the next person is standing there with their drawer to, to take over? Mm -hmm. But there wasn't any replacement at any of the registers. So all of these people were standing there. So I was so furious I said I'd like to speak to the manager. So in the fullness of time, which was like 20 minutes and I had smoke coming out of my ears, <laughs> the manager, Mr. Milk Toast, <laughs> comes up and he says, you wanted to see me, ma'am? And I said, well, yes. This is Friday afternoon at exactly 4 o'clock. All of, half of your cashiers closed out their registers and there was nobody to replace them. Now, in Walmart, everything is done by computer. For every sale, mm -hmm. you know the day, the hour, the minute that everything was purchased. That's why you know when your peak times are, you know when the swing shifts are for these mm -hmm. factories, when they get off and all this kind of stuff. And we were all standing there waiting on a Friday afternoon when a lot of people get paid or they even take a half day off. They got things they're going to do. And he says, ma'am, all the people in my church go to this store, and they love it. And I gave them a calculated look, and I said, what has that got to do with the price of bananas in Brazil? And he says to me, ma'am, what you just said doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, my God. When you're being sarcastic... And somebody can't even understand what you're saying. Now, I don't. Maybe that's not an expression that they use here, but some places they say, "What's that got to do with price of coffee or bananas or whatever in Brazil or something else?" But I couldn't stand that. And then the other thing that bothered me was one other time I went in that Walmart, and it was this must have been like eight years ago. And I was leaving the next day to join some people from the Ozark Highlands Trail Society to go away for the weekend camping up in Hawk Creek. So I stopped off to get a few things. But a migraine was coming on. And I knew that I have to get out of here quick because within an hour it's going to be full blown and I have to get on the road. So I was in a hurry. And I got my stuff and I went home. And I no sooner got home, and oh my gosh, flashing lights, couldn't stand the sound, nothing. The phone rings, and a girl calls from Walmart, and she says, Ma'am, were you just in the Walmart store? And I said, Yes. And she said, Did you realize that you left your wallet on the top of the check stand? And I said, No, I did not know that. I have this terrible uh, migraine coming on and I probably wasn't thinking clearly. And I said, where is my wallet? She says, well, the lady who happened to be checking you out because it was a busy time was a customer service lady and she immediately took that wallet to the cash room, which is a closed door that's up near the, the service desk. That's where they count the money and take the drawers and all that kind of thing. And I said, well, tomorrow I'm leaving on this thing. Could I come up there and get it tomorrow morning? because I got this terrible migraine and it's, it's an hour round trip for me to go up and get it. She said, oh sure, it'll be fine, be perfectly safe. It's going to be in the, locked in the cash room. So I got up there the next day and I told them about it and they looked in the cash room and they said, we, we don't see anything. 
I said, I'd like to speak to the manager. This was not Mr. Milk Toast. This was a different one. So he comes out, and I told him what happened, and he went in there, and he looked. He says, well, uh, no, it's not in there. I said, do we know as a fact that my wallet went into that room? Well, yes, ma'am. And do we know as a fact that my wallet is not in that room anymore? He says, well, yes. I said, then we have a problem, and we need to call the police. And then he started in, no, ma'am. We do not need the police. Walmart can handle this. And I said, the last time I looked, I was a citizen of the United States, of Arkansas, and Hackett. But I am not a citizen of Walmart, and I want the police. He said, we don't need to be hasty. We don't need to do this. I said, you've told me yourself that you know for a fact that that wallet went in there and that it's not in there anymore. He says, well, we'll have to roll some, we'll have to roll some tapes and so see what activity took place in that room and this and that and the other thing. So finally, um, I said, no, I want the police. He says, well, go ahead and call the police. I said, oh, well, can I use one of your phones? I don't have any money. I don't have a wallet. I don't have anything. So I went over there and I called the police. And after, in the fullness of time for that, a police officer shows up. Of course, the manager immediately appropriates this man, like I hadn't called, like he was handling this because mm -hmm. now he was taking the high ground for Walmart. So right there in front of the, the desk, he's saying, ma'am, name, age, height, weight. I said, wait a second. I'm not the perp. I'm the victim. He was treating me like, I'm sure the people thought that I was being arrested right there in front of the service desk. So I was pretty upset about that. So it took him a few days to run the thing. But finally they found out that my wallet had in fact gone into some, must be some metal cabinet or something there in that room. And then usually the cast room isn't empty, but late at night, the two girls who were in there were going to go out and get something to eat, which they could do if they both went out together and locked the door behind them. And apparently the one girl had gotten that wallet out of the cabinet. She'd kind of, there must have been a table that went up to the door, and she just kind of slid it behind her along that table, and the last thing she did is the door closed behind her, she got that wallet. And apparently she took it to the bathroom. And I guess she got in there, and she was messing with my wallet in the stall, and then she got scared about what she did, and she told them later, when they finally got the truth out of her, that she had thrown it in the tampon bin. Well, I had some things there, not all, only my credit cards and pictures, and just junk that was of value to me was gone. But if you think Walmart ever apologized to me, I sent... A letter to the chief of the thing there, who was, his name was something Scott, and I sent it to him. I never even got a letter back from them. I told them what had happened up there. And so finally, I guess the girl was arrested, and they told me when this trial was going to be. So Ken and I went down to this courthouse down on Garrison, and that was interesting, because I see four people standing in the hall, and I didn't know them, but I knew their faces. Well, they must have been clerks and stuff from Walmart, but they were not the ones involved with this thing. So we're supposed to have this woman, her name was Allie Jones. So we get in there, and the judge is an old cracker southern gentleman. And then this other guy, her lawyer, shows up. Now he's an albino wearing a white suit. If there's one thing an albino doesn't need to be wearing, it's a white suit. It just, it's too much white. But anyway, we were waiting and we were waiting, and she didn't show up. And so... He said, well, where is she? Well, he says, I don't know exactly. Maybe she couldn't find a babysitter or this or that. And he said, well, that woman had an invitation to my courtroom. And I don't like it when people don't acknowledge 
my invitations and I'm hereby swearing out a bench warrant for a thousand dollars for her arrest. So that happened. And I then you never knew what came of it. There was a little girl who looked like a sixteen year old cheerleader and apparently she was she was the deputy prosecutor. I don't think she was at a junior high school, but she was very nice and she says, well, something will happen with this. So then several months later, they call on the phone and they said, Oh, um, yes, she was convicted of that. And I said, well, what happens to her? Well, well, nothing. Um, you know, it'd be on her record. I said, nothing? No. Said, Would you, but, well, you could ask for to, her to do some, you know, service for the community. I said, yes, let's do that. So I had to figure out how much money was in my wallet. I always had some traveler's checks in there. I have no idea what they were. And I didn't necessarily have the numbers for those. So anyway, we came up with some amount. And then I suppose some restitution for my wallet was paid to the court. And then monthly, I got a check from the court. And she, Oh, she wasn't allowed to seek me out or come and visit me or do any of those things. But I thought that that was a pretty tacky thing from Walmart. And then a few months later... I was getting my hair cut, and the, you know your hairdresser knows everything about yeah. you. She said, well, whatever happened about your wallet at Walmart? And I said, well, they found the girl, and I finally got restitution, but, you know, you just feel violated that somebody stole your wallet like that. And to put in a tampon bin, God. <laughs> so anyway, a girl is sitting in another chair, and she turns around, and she says, oh, my gosh, was that in May? Are you the woman whose wallet was stolen out of the cash room at the Zero Street Walmart, and I said, yeah, that's me. She says, oh, my gosh. She says, I worked in that cash room. I was the other girl. And she said, the hell was raised in that store, and everybody was a suspect, you know, to you know what happened yeah. uh, to that wallet. And when I, said to the, when I had said to that um, manager, mm -hmm. you know, um, he said, oh, he said to me, well, if you hadn't been so irresponsible as to leave your your wallet on the check stand, we wouldn't have had this problem. And I said, "Well, yes, that's uh, there's something that's called blame the victim." But I was having a migraine headache and I was trying to get home before it crashed because I wouldn't be able to drive. I just would have to stop along the road. But I said, "Actually, my losing my wallet, she did you a favor." And he says, "How's that?" I said, "Anybody who would do that." It wouldn't have been long until she was skimming off the cash drawers. Yeah. And when I was talking to this girl in the beauty parlor, and she says, it's funny you should say that. Because, you know, when you think about it, the nights I was working with her, that sometimes the money wasn't right on. And my, but money is never exactly on in a cash right. drawer, because my daughter worked as a customer service clerk at a big grocery store in Omaha, mm -hmm. and she had to close out people's register drawers. Right. And they could, you know, a lot of times be over a dollar or two, under a dollar or two. Nobody bothered about that. Bills stick together. It changes off and off a little bit. It's, yeah. it's not a big deal. But, um, and then she said the other funny thing was she started working here just briefly as a cashier. She had no experience, and then they moved her into the cash room, and she says, I never understand that. She says, you normally have to work at the cash mm -hmm. register a long time at Walmart. Yeah. Imagine before they moved you into the cash room. So when I say that I like Rogers Avenue better than Zero Street <laughs> Walmart, there is a difference, isn't there? And I think in the Rogers, they may know the, uh, what the, about the prices of bananas in Brazil. I don't know. <laughs> they don't on Zero Street. <laughs>